Hey, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna share three simple techniques you can practice to improve your forehand at home. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Even share this video with a friend, as those are the best ways to support this channel. So first, I'm gonna be using the Topspin Pro to practice these techniques for you. I am an affiliate, and my affiliate link is in the description below. It is an awesome product for at home and on-court improvement. If you're a parent, a coach, or a player, you need to get the Topspin Pro. So the first technique I want you to practice, and, and please, I'm in my basement here, so no excuses. Grab your racket, follow along with the video. I mean, this is a video about practicing at home, so grab your racket and do it with me. The first thing I want you to practice is how to take the racket back and improve your take back. Most players, they take the racket back with just their arm reaching. Even if they turn sideways, they just reach their arm back, and their hitting arm and body become disconnected. If you've watched any instructional videos anywhere on any platform in the past or taken a lesson, you've probably heard something called the unit turn. Well, the unit turn is when your left side and right side of your body turn as a unit. So don't think as the backswing as bringing your arm back, but think of the best way to take your racket back as, is by turning the body. It accomplishes the same thing from getting the racket to go behind you so then you can swing forward, but it makes sure that you turn and coil your body rather than just having your hitting arm disconnected from the body. It's really important that we have synchronization between the body and the racket, and turning with both hands on the racket gets our body and racket synchronized. Now, a couple things when it comes to the technique here. You'll notice my non-hitting hand is on the throat of the racket, so if you're usually in a ready position with both hands on the grip, then when you take the racket back, just slide it up to the throat. I like to tell my students to have their index finger touching the strings. That's just a nice way to make sure that your non-hitting hand went up to the right spot. Second, you'll notice that my elbows are out away from my body, which, by the way, I recommend in the ready position to begin with, that there's space here and that the elbows aren't in. When your elbows are out during the unit turn, it helps you with two things. The first is it makes sure that your racket doesn't go too far behind you. We don't want a swing that is really, really big because against fast, deep shots, maybe in doubles and somebody poaches and you've got a really big swing, it's gonna take you too long and you're gonna struggle against better opponents. So keeping the elbows out can help limit the swing and keep it from getting too big. And another thing that happens when your elbow is out like this rather than down is notice when I dropped my elbow, my racket opens. So a lot of players, they take their racket and back and their hand is above their elbow. And then their strings open, which actually makes it more difficult to get topspin. One of the things you need for topspin is to close the racket face so you can brush up the back of the ball. Well, when you take the racket back and now it opens, it becomes more difficult to close the racket and brush. So elbows out away from your body, slide your non-hitting hand up to the throat of the racket during the unit turn, and it's just gonna look like this with the elbows out. So the first technique I want you to practice is just you're in your ready position and just practice taking the racket back with both hands. You'll notice the racket tip is pointing up. Two heads are better than one. Two-headed monster, racket head in my head, right? So we don't want the swing way up above. It's more of a, of a take back, a unit turn. And again, that back elbow is up. Just improving the take back is gonna make a huge difference. Now the second tip I want you to practice, and I'm so excited about this because this is actually one of those things that can completely change somebody's forehand. And I've noticed that when players hear this, they've almost never heard it before. And it has to do with the contact. You know, there's something that is familiar and similar, I should say, from forehand to forehand with all the pros. And it is that at contact, their non-hitting hand is above the level of contact. And if you don't believe me, just <laughs> go look on YouTube, any video, and you'll see that when the pros hit their forehands, their non-hitting hand is above contact. You watch beginners hit forehands, their non-hitting hand is below contact. This is vital because if you're turning, even if you turn with both hands on the racket and you're doing a body turn to take the racket back rather than your arm, when you turn, now your non-hitting hand is up here around shoulder level. Now you don't want it to drop because if it drops, it becomes a counterweight. 
your hitting arm is going forward, your non-hitting arm will go back and it will not allow you to turn your hips. If you've ever, if you're a coach, by the way, if you've ever seen someone and they hit like this and they're hitting and they kind of almost look like they're in a straight jacket or they're giving themselves a hug as they hit the ball, it's because their non-hitting arm is dropping. Look at the pros. Watch at contact. Their non-hitting hand is above contact. This makes sure that the hips can turn. So what you want to practice is doing the unit turn first, then drop, and you can stop with the Top Spin Pro, stop at the contact, and the non-hitting hand should be in front of the body and above contact. So film yourself, film yourself shadow swinging in your house, and stop at contact. And one of the things I tell people is you can just wave to your opponent at contact, you know, just as a way to think of it, to make sure that you can actually get your non-hitting hand above contact. Don't let your non-hitting hand drop as you hit the forehand. Practice having your non-hitting hand in front of the body between you and your opponent and above contact height. Your forehand ability and consistency is gonna go way up and you're gonna get a lot more topspin. And the last thing is a little old school, but it will make a huge difference in your ability to hit down the line passing shots. It'll uh, to improve the quality of the topspin that you can hit and it has to do with after contact going up. Now, what I'm gonna do is choke up a little bit because my ceiling here in my basement's a little low. So I want you to catch the racket higher than eye level. If you look at Dominic Team when he's practicing forehands, you look at Venus and Serena, they do this all the time. Sampras would finish up here. Tennis, the tennis court is nearly, if I'm hitting the ball this way, the tennis court is nearly three times longer than it is wide. We think of the tennis court as being wide. It's not. It's, it's very forward. We have to hit the ball forward. And so when we swing across our body, we're not going to first off get the top spin we're looking for, and we end up shanking the ball, we yank the ball to the side. I want you to practice after you hit the ball going straight up. So watch this again. My racket's at contact. I'm not going to go to the left like I'm going to go to this wall. I'm gonna go straight up after contact and then catch the racket higher than eye level. The reason I brought up Dominic Team is because when he's practicing his forehands, he catches the racket every single time. Now, the argument against that is people say, well, he doesn't do that when he's um, actually playing a match. And I agree, but he's also a Grand Slam champion and one of the best players in the world and he's kind of allowed to do whatever he wants. But isn't it interesting that when he's practicing his forehands, he catches his racket and he actually holds it here for a second and his hitting hand is higher than eye level. I think you and I would both agree that we would love to hit our forehands as well as Dominic Team does when he is practicing his forehands. And it's interesting that he is really making sure that he is doing something extremely basic to help him prepare for his matches. So I want you to practice hitting forehands or shadow swinging forehands in your house and after you get to contact, go up and then catch the racket higher than eye level. So let's go over these three ideas again. In your ready position, make sure your elbows are out and then when you turn for the forehand, turn as a unit. Think of the take back not as an arm movement back but your body turning to take the racket back. That helps coil so you can uncoil, but it also gets synchronization between the body and racket. The second tip you can practice is when you get to the contact, just stop and just shadow swing a forehand and stop at contact. Have your non-hitting hand in front of the body and above contact. Again, I tell my students to wave as an easy way to make sure that happens. And then the last tip is after you get to contact, go up. I mean, top spin is a vertical spin, right? So we want to be going up in order to create a vertical spin. You're going to go up if you're in a room with a low ceiling, to go straight to the ceiling and then catch the racket in your non-hitting hand higher than eye level. Those three tips over the last two decades have helped countless students I have taught and I know they are going to help you. If you follow these, you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy over at 2MinuteTennis.net, and I'll see you in the next video.